everybody. I'm here today trying something new. Um, so I am in several different Facebook groups, um, junk journaling, uh, journal making Facebook groups. And um, in one of those groups, a lady reached out and asked if um, some of you be willing to, to test some of her stuff. She's putting together packets for accessory kit, you know, journal making accessory kits and some folio kits and things of that nature. And she asked if anybody wanted a sample to try, um, to kind of give her some feedback. And so I'm here today with this video. Um, and I thought we would just tackle what she sent and read it step by step and see what becomes of it. Um... So yeah, her name is Samantha. She's with Acorn Hat Creations. Um, you can find her on Etsy. I believe it's acornhatcreations.etsy.com. And um, yeah, I haven't, I honestly haven't had a, a moment to browse around to see all of her stuff. She sent this to me last week and um, I was hoping to get to it this past weekend, but I did not. So I'm now jumping on to it. So. Um, in the package was two Ziploc bags. One says accessories and one says core. So I'll be honest, I've, I've never made a portfolio or a folio. Um, so this is customizable and complete folio kit with assembled base and accessories feedback. This is the feedback form. And so I'll set that aside and We'll just jump into this and see. I, I will say this. She did message me and tell me not to use this glue stick. Um, she said that it's not been the greatest, so she told me to use whatever glue I use. Now, this is an Elmer's glue stick, but it's a washable glue stick. Um, I've not had much luck with these, so I, I will set this aside. And I'll use, I use the Elmer's Craft Bond. Um, tends to work better for what I do. So we'll use that with this this kit um, and see see where see what it does for us. So um, she says we will need a scissors and a paper trimmer. Now I don't really necessarily have a paper trimmer. I have scissors and this is my paper trimmer. <laughs> I say that. I have a long paper trimmer but I I don't um, I don't have it out handy. Um, I cleaned and reorganized this last weekend, and now that I think about it, I don't know where that guy ended up. Um, anyways. <laughs> oh, he's right here beside me. So, I do have, I do have this. Um, it's a paper trimmer that we'll have handy if we need it, but I usually stick to scissors and my razor blade. So, um, let's jump in. Excuse me. Uh, so let's see here. Welcome to your super duper fun personalized journal folio kit. Again, I've never made a folio before. I see um, different YouTube videos and I see them, you know, in the junk journaling community and all that. So um, I, I just never made one. So this should be interesting because <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, this kit includes fully customizable kit and accessories to make your own journal folio. See examples of finished products at acornhatcreations.etsy.com. Okay, so I'm going to, I will, I will fill out this feedback form, but I'm gonna use this video as a feedback as well. So you can see me going through it, see me try to attempt to make a folio. I've never made one before. And I will just first say this. I flipped through this and it's, it's kind of clunky, but I think, I, my thought process was, oh goodness, and I think that's why I've been putting it off partially. I mean, I was busy this weekend, but because I was kind of nervous to jump into it. But I will say this. She sends you to see examples of finished products at acornhatcreations.etsy.com. I would love a picture of a finished product um, because as I sit here trying to figure this out now, I can't jump on my phone and and go to the website and check it out because my phone's you guys right now. So, um, but you know, I would love a picture. It doesn't have to be a colored picture, but some sort of picture to show me what I'm doing. 
Um, I, like I said, I kind of have an idea of what a folio is, but I really don't know. Um, so yeah, let's move on. You will need not included scissors and paper trimmer. We got that. So the core supplies include fully assembled base, including hinges, glue stick, which we decided again, she said to use the one, you know, not use this one, but to use what we use coordinating and complementary paper for covers inside and out journal cover waterfall journal extra paper for covering desired areas on core so again i'm gonna i'm gonna interject and this is just kind of gonna be a feedback video i guess waterfall journal i i'm not 100 percent sure what that means i kind of think i do but if i had a picture telling me what i what it was that i was going to be creating would be very helpful Accessories and decorations include thread and or twine string jute. She's got marked out something. I can't, I can't really read it. Needle for thread. So she didn't include a needle. That's okay. Ribbon and or string. Again, if we need a needle, then maybe write it up, hip, up here. Maybe we won't need a needle. But I'm kind of gathering that maybe we will if we've got string. Maybe, maybe not. But if we do... Add it to our not included. Ribbon and or string slash lace. A roll of washi tape. I see that in here. Wooden bookmark. I felt that in here. Playing cards to decorate. Coordinating and or complementary papers for decorating and accessorizing. And then additional accessories and decorations also may include wooden accessories, stickers, beads, buttons, sparkly things, charms, die cuts, mini or full size cards and or envelopes. Lined paper, bows, flowers, tags, labels, notepads. And I do see some of that in here. Um, there's some flowers, there's some ribbons, there's some buttons. So yeah, there's, there's extra additional accessories in here. So that's good. So moving on. Instructions. Assemble Journal A. Okay. Um... Let's see what that means. <laughs> um, I, again, I, I feel like I'm kind of lost here, but I've never made a folio. I don't, I don't know that I know what that is. So um, this appears to be maybe um, our template or um, oh goodness, I'm really not sure. Um, it's got. Maybe I've got it the wrong way. I'm gonna say that's a D. I really don't know. I'm gonna say that's a B. Um, so it looks like we've got some double flip outs and tip outs. Okay, so we're gonna set that one aside for a minute. Choose two pages from core supply paper and mark as E for future use. Okay. So, I'm going to mark it with a pencil that I didn't know I needed. And, um, so let me find that. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, pencil is the typical that everybody has, but I don't, I don't use pencils. And maybe you could mark it with whatever, I guess. Um, again, I'm just, um. I'm going at this blindly. So choose two pages from core supply paper and mark as E for future use. So the core supply paper is several different colors, but all appear to be at the same size. Now, they're not the same weight. Some of this is cardstock and some of this is a, a thinner paper. So I don't know Um, I don't know if we're supposed to use, it just says choose two. So we're going to choose two. We're going to go with the darker two. And we're going to set them aside as E. I'm just going to lightly mark E on these. Because it says mark as E for future use. So I'm going to set those aside. So we did that. Attach writing pages in between journal cover by stapling, sewing, or gluing. Okay. Um... I don't know where my writing pages are, and I don't know what my journal cover is. 
Um, I can't sew because I didn't have a needle and I didn't know I needed a stapler. So I guess I'll glue. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of confused on this. Um, and I, I want to give some honest feedback um, because I think she's wanting to do these, to have them available on her shop. Um, I was looking in the accessories to see if we had some like journal paper. I say journal paper like lined paper. I don't see anything lined. So again, I don't know what my writing pages are and I don't know what my journal cover is. Um, I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna put a question mark there because I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Um, blank pages fold in half to use for this can be found on pages 11 through 15. So, 7, 8, 9, 10, page 11 through 15, 14, 15. So these are all blank pages. Blank pages fold in half. And I guess I'm just gonna have the numbers on the bottom of them. I don't, I don't know. And I guess I'm folding them in half this way. And I guess I was folding them all at once. Um, so I think we might've done this. Maybe, we found those. A symbol waterfall journal is, is B. So again, I don't know. I, I, let me just look through here and see. Attach writing pages in between journal cover by stapling, sewing, or gluing. I don't know what our journal cover is, unless we're supposed to use this. They fit. I, I don't know if this is our journal cover though. That's, that's the problem. Okay. These are instructions. This is a waterfall stuff. Waterfall page one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Additional pieces, templates to use for a mini envelope. Cover nameplate. So, none of this appears to be journal cover. So, I am going to say that this is our journal cover. Um, let me look at the front page and see. Our core supplies fully assembled base, including hinges. So maybe this is our fully assembled base with the hinges. I don't see, um, Coordinating, so coordinating and complementary paper for covers inside and out, journal cover, waterfall, journal, extra paper for covering desired areas on core. Okay, so we're going to say that this is our journal cover. This is our fully assembled base. Okay, so attach writing pages in between the journal cover by stapling, sewing, or gluing. So because I, I, um, I'm going to staple these for ease of time, um, otherwise I'll have to figure out where my needle is and sew it and do all that. So for ease of time, since I'm kind of confused, I'm gonna get out my handy dandy stapler. And I don't feel 100% comfortable that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm gonna do it anyways, because I don't know what else, what else is my journal cover. So, 
So we did that. I stapled the folded pages in the inside here. Okay. Again, um, we're going to go with it, and hopefully we'll have something to cover up these numbers that are there. So, we're going to say that we attach the writing pages in between the journal cover by stapling, sewing, or gluing blank pages, fold in half to use. Okay, so I feel pretty okay that this is, if, if we decided this is our journal cover, then I feel pretty good that we accomplished that. So, assemble waterfall journal. Choose six pieces from the core pack. Mark using templates on page five through 10. Okay, six, any colors, I guess? Let's see here. One. I, I guess this is gonna be however I want it to look. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they're of different weights, but I have no instructions to tell me that I should be using the heavier cardstock for certain things or what. So I'm going with those six. Choose six pieces from the core pack. Mark using templates on page five through 10. Cut along the lines. Okay, so I think, set you aside. I think we're going to I'm using my templates from pages five through 10. So here's pages five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I am assuming that these get smaller. Yes. Okay. So instead of cutting these out and using them, um, the page is bigger than the template, and I'm, I'm going to hope that that's okay. You know, it's wider um, than the template here. But. Um, we are just gonna, we're winging it. We are winging it. Okay. So she says, mark using templates on page five through 10. So I'm marking these pages. This is what we're doing. So we use page five. And then we're gonna... I wonder if, I mean, I love the templates, but I wonder if um, it would be helpful to um, put the sizes in here in our templates, like six and a half inches or four and a half inches or, or whatever. So we kind of have a second way to check. Um, there are some people that, that function very well with rulers and numbers and centimeters and fractions and half marks and all that. I'm not one of those people, but there are some people that do. And so I wonder if, um, if you marked these, if you labeled these, like waterfall page four is supposed to be, you know, however many inches. So, again, to double check, and some people don't do well with templates, they do better with, just tell me it's six and a half inches, or, you know, something like that. So that would be helpful, to add, I mean, the dimensions of what I'm actually measuring out here, instead of using these templates. Um, you see how I'm having to do the templates, 
I guess I could have measured them myself and, and then measured them and all that, but um, I'm just going by what I've got here. So since, since I really can't see what my template looks like, my other option is to lay the template on top and cut it out like a stencil or like a, a template. Um, but I don't want to do that because I want to be able to use this waterfall template again. Um, I mean, I guess if it was cut out, I could still use it, but I want to be able to use, you know, this, these sheets again. Um, and maybe they would work better if I cut them out. I don't know. So I've marked my six pages. Um, you can kind of see that they taper down. So choose six pieces from the core pack. We did that. Mark using templates on pages five through 10. Cut along the lines. Okay, so um, I am going to use my paper cutter. <laughs> Again, this would be handy to know that this sheet's supposed to be, you know, five and a half inches or, or whatever it is. Um, a reference as to exactly how big this sheet's supposed to be would be helpful. So there's that one. I'm not a uh, mathy person, and I measure a lot of the stuff that I do by eyeballing, and um, but some people don't do that. Some people can't do that, and um, so I think when you're trying to teach somebody, when you're teaching somebody or you're putting together a kit for somebody to, to learn on their own, I think you have to be aware of there are different styles of learning and then you have people who have never ever done this before and say oh a folio kit that looks simple I don't want to tackle a big full journal yet but I could probably tackle a little folio and would order your kit and not really know what they're doing so you have to I don't want to say dumb it down but you have to break it down to where different learning styles you, you have to be inclusive to several different ways people learn by seeing a finished product or by seeing a video of you know if if um, Samantha did a video herself of creating you know, using one of her folio kits. She may have. I haven't, um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't had time to really explore any of her social medias or anything like that. So she, she may have. Um, she may be doing the same exact video that I'm doing here. But again, she knows what she means by this stuff. And, um, and so you have to be aware that not everybody knows what you're talking about. So, as you can see, we have kind of a waterfall effect. I like this. I think it's cute already. Um, I, again, I, I just randomly picked pages and um, went with it. So cut along the lines. We did that. Stack on top of each other, starting with one on the bottom. So we did that because one was the biggest. And then we went up from there. Line up along bottom line. So, I don't know what I'm lining up and a, a, along what bottom line. I mean, I guess you could stack them up like that. Maybe that's what she's talking about. Same, same thing. Stack on top of each other, starting with one on the bottom line up along the bottom line. That's what we're going to go with. That's what we're going to say line up along the bottom line is, is, is tapping them down and making them all line up along the bottom line. Okay, so on to page three of instructions. Attach by applying a thin layer of glue on top backside of each paper, starting with page two. So that it looks like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Feel free to insert 
More pages in between the waterfall pages. Use extra pieces of paper from this kit or an old notebook paper, scrap paper, whatever you have lying around. Okay, we're not gonna insert more paper right now. We're just trying to get through what we're doing. Then we'll get creative with it once we figure out what we're doing. <laughs> Attach by applying a thin layer of glue on top backside of each paper, starting with page two. So page one is our bigger page up here. Page two is our next. So, um, thin layer of glue on top back side of each paper. So if I did, so if I'm following along and I may be wrong on this, I'm, I'm just, this is how my brain works. You told me to, to line them up at the bottom. So I have this. And then this is what you're telling me I have, which is true. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have that. So attach by applying a thin layer of glue on top backside of each paper, starting with page two. Now, this tells me that I'm gonna apply a thin layer of glue right here, and then right here, and then right here, and right here, and right here. So my finished product will look like this. They'll all be glued together, but I don't, I don't see this as a waterfall. I see it should be like this. Again, if I had a picture, I might, could better understand what I'm supposed to be doing. So my brain tells me to attach it like this because this would be a waterfall. And I would be able to flip up my pages like this. So, let me just read ahead a little bit and see. You can cut out the template on page five through 10 to use as an additional waterfall journal. Okay, um, that would be a good idea. Um, again, that goes back to deb debating on if you wanted to cut, cut out the templates or not. Attach journal, closed side on top of hinge to hinge A using glue to attach. Hmm. Attach journal, this is my journal. Closed side on top of hinge to hinge A. I don't have anything that tells me what hinge A is. Unless, okay, unless this is an A. Um, I see it now if I turn it this way a little bit. Um, so yeah, maybe we need to be a little bit more clear that that's an A, because I was actually, when I first saw it, I saw it as a, a percent sign. I mean, yeah, a cent sign. But then I thought, no, it must be a D. I didn't see it as an A. So, okay, A and B. It makes a little bit more sense. So, attach journal, closed side on top of hinge to hinge A, using glue to attach. I don't know what, unless I'm supposed to attach that. Because this is my journal. That maybe? Attach waterfall journal to top hinge B. So my waterfall journal goes up here. So this is hinge B. Um, but I'm not so sure. First off, 
I'm not so sure that my my waterfall journal is going to fit in there. Um, maybe it's supposed to stick out like that. Again, I don't I don't know. Um, I'm kind of tempted to put my waterfall journal here. Because it fits um, better there. Um, um, goodness, I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm really tempted though that this should go here because otherwise I'm going to have to trim all this down. And I already trimmed. Um, maybe I didn't trim according to my template. Let me just see. Maybe my template is my template is smaller, so maybe that's incorrect on my part that I didn't trim this down all the way. But I I guess it would be helpful to know if my waterfall journal's here or if it's here. Um. By the way that the instructions tell me, attach waterfall journal to the top hinge B. But um, I'm going to go rogue and not do that. <laughs> let me see if, let me read ahead and see if I'm going to mess up by doing that. So um, I'm not 100% sure what we're doing here with the attached journal closed side on top of hinge to hinge A using glue to attach. I think that means attach the journal here, but I don't know why you would do that because your journal is attached in here. So why add your paper there? And then number four is attach waterfall journal to the top hinge B. And again, I think we've determined that, that um, several things I it won't fit so I'll have to trim it down and I kind of actually like it right here <laughs> so let's just see what what the rest of it says choose four pieces of core paper for covers attach covers to the front and the back inside and outside trim side edges to fit ensure it, it folio closes maybe the folio closes with inside covers before gluing. Okay, that seems pretty simple. So we have a, if we tuck everybody in here, we have a front and we have a back. Um, and then the inside cover. And if we, I mean, maybe this is the outside cover, or the inside, the back cover, but if we have a, fo a waterfall here, So, choose four pieces of core paper for covers. So here's our core paper stack. And I'm gonna go with the bright, well, I'll go with these four light yellows. Attach covers to front and back, inside and outside. Trim the fit. Ensure folio closes. Okay, so number six is attach flap cover. Use one piece of paper from core pack. Fold in half, cut excess. Okay, so attach flap cover. So I assume that this is the attach flap cover. This is the flap cover, maybe. Um, and I, let's see here. You can use one piece of core paper, fold in half and cut excess, okay. And then, and then my instructions say, decorate and innovate using included items, leftover paper from core pack and additional accessory templates on pages 16 and 17. So we looked at those. Um, those are here the additional pieces, templates to use. Um, 
I, I understand kind of what this is, but I don't really kind of understand what this is. So we're, we're going to set these aside because we're just trying to get a folio going on here. We're not going to decorate yet. So my question is, if you'll rewind with me a little bit to our very first instruction was to choose two pages from the core and mark them as E. And I did that. But nowhere does it tell me I need to use E now. Um, so, I don't, I don't think I'm missing a page. I don't see anything for E, so... Um, cause this is my welcome letter and my waterfall journal templates. And then this is my instructions. And the very first thing says for me to choose two pages from my core supply paper and mark as E for future use. And so I did that. Um, but I don't, this is B. I don't see an E anywhere else in my instructions. This references hinge A and hinge B. None of my um, templates are marked as E. And then my finishing choose for, none of this is marked as E. So I don't quite know I don't quite know what I'm supposed to be doing with E here. Um, so, I I am kind of stuck. <laughs> um, because I don't want to attach anything more or glue anything more until I kind of have a better feel for what I'm doing. Um, I mean, I feel pretty confident that I can do that I can attach this cover and this cover for my front inside and outside cover and trim that down. Um, I will say this, I understand she used the envelope to create this base, but this darker markers he here and there, um, you know, I, I, you can kind of see it not a whole lot, but if my paper was any thinner, um, I might be seeing, I might be seeing that. Um, and I, I don't know that I would like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. I understand reduce, reuse, recycle. I think that's great. And I love that the, that we have a, like a base or a pattern going on here. But by using these as my base, I have to do something to cover that up. Um, somehow, I have to create something to cover that up. So, I I am kind of stumped here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, I like the waterfall here. It fits. I feel pretty confident that we got a little journal going on here. I like that these flip. All these little envelopes flip. I, I love that. Um, I, I feel pretty confident about that. I'm not 100% sure why we have flaps. I'm not 100% sure I understand that. Um, I mean, I guess if you did the waterfall here and trimmed it down, that would kind of make sense, but I don't know. Um, And I understand we have a flap here to close it up as a little folio. I get all that. Um, but I, I feel like I'm kind of stuck. Um, and I'm, I feel like I'm kind of scared to move forward because I don't know what I'm doing with E. And so I don't want to 
I don't I don't know what to do. So, <laughs> um, so I guess I'm kind of stuck, and I was not able to complete this project because of that, um, and I hate that. I, I mean, I guess I can go rogue and figure it out, but I really want to give Samantha the best feedback as possible, and um, and that's where I'm at. Um, I wanted to make this folio. I, I don't know what a folio is supposed to look like, but I can kind of gather. It's kind of like a mini journal, and you know, it kind of has some cool flips and flops, and I, I get that whole feel, but... Um, I, I just don't know how much further I'm comfortable going with it. So, um, so I think that I'm going to stop here. Um, and yeah, cause I don't know. I get the, the attach in the front and the back to basically cover up the white core, you know, the white template. Attach the flap cover. I I understand that per se, and then decorate and innovate using including leftover papers, things like that. Um, I get that. Um, the extra the extra templates here. I'm not a hundred percent. Again, I understand that this is this is an envelope fold up and fold down template. I'm not quite sure what this guy is. It says mini envelope, but I don't. I don't know. Um, I get that these are writing templates. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this is. Optional fold down, print or trace and cut along outside line only then fold upwards. I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, fold backwards and attach to book near top, leave room for fold down. So I don't know what this is. Fold bottom piece to this upper line. Fold up. Uh, I don't. I don't know. This is. This doesn't tell me what this is. This tells me that this is the nameplate. This is envelope. Um, but I don't know what this part is. So I don't. I don't know what these additional accessories are, or how to use them. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Unfortunately. Um, I think there's some potential here. Um, I just, again, I think that we need to um, probably work on the best way to explain um, explain this because you've made folio kits and you know what they are and what to do with them and things like that. And um, I don't. <laughs> um, and I was hoping this would, would introduce me to them. Um, we can have a look at the accessories. I think they're super cute. Just what I can see. This is like a little wooden bookmark. Little labels and stickers. All sorts of colorful pages. Um, scraps. Cute, cute stuff. Little bee stuff. I think this would be really cute. Um, I just, I'm kind of stuck as to, to assembling it. And I, of course, you know, you want it assembled before you decorate. So I don't know what to do here. Um, this is again, more cute stuff, little bows and some little bee snippets and charms. And so I think there's tons of potential here, little flowers and some ribbon and all that. I just, um, I kind of got stuck on assembling it, and um, I hate that. So, um, so I'm not going to fill this out. I'm going to just answer these questions here on video. Um, so, the um, feedback thing says, thanks so much for volunteering to test this. I appreciate your feedback. Customizable and complete folio kit with assembled base and accessories feedback form. Okay. How easy was this was the project to complete? One through ten. I'm gonna say it was if one was the easiest and ten was the hardest, then I'm gonna say it was probably a nine or a ten. Um, because I didn't complete it. I, 
I kind of got lost and I'm still, I'm probably going to sleep, go to bed tonight wondering what I was supposed to do with E. With the two pages I set aside for E. So, <laughs> I am an overthinker. I will give you that caveat though. But, um, so yeah, it was, it was very cumbersome to me. Um, was there anything you needed to complete it that was not included besides scissors? Well, um, what did we talk about? The needle for thread. If, if that's needed, which I guess it would be needed if you sewed the folio together, but I stapled mine, you know, maybe put that there. Um, more clear instructions, I guess, would, would be something that I needed to complete it. Um, that's, that's, yeah. Were the journal instructions clear? How could they be improved? Um, again, they, they were not very clear to me. Um, you saw that, you saw me work through them. And, um, I, I don't, I, I don't know how they can be approved because I don't, again, know what I'm doing. So you saw me kind of fumble through that. So um, hopefully that's helpful in how you can improve those instructions. Um, I understand you want to make it really simple and, you know, short, easy steps, but they have to be clear. And again, they have to, um, you have to keep in mind, um, different learning styles and, and different, you know, the way different people understand things. And again, I don't have anything to really go by a, a, a picture or a photo of what a folio is would be great. I, I understand you're probably assuming that anybody that orders your folio kit has an idea of what a folio is. And so they want to make one. So they ordered one. I get that. But, um, just kind of keep in mind that people may be thinking a folio is a smaller journal and an easier journal. And if they're new to journaling, creating journals, junk journaling, they may think that they'll start with a folio and so make it an easy beginner project. Um, I've been do doing journals for quite a while and this, this was not really easy to me. Um, because I was trying to follow the instructions and not go rogue and do my own thing, I wanted to complete a folio using this instructions. And again, you know, being able to give Samantha the feedback. So, were the waterfall instructions clear? How could they be improved? Again, we kind of went through the waterfall as we were making it. And uh, I shared my pointers on that. Um, and just having a kind of an image of what an, a waterfall um, looks like would be helpful. I kind of had an idea so that, but again, they seemed a little, at that one point, they seemed a little backwards when we get to glue in. So I didn't glue mine because I wasn't 100% sure. Was there enough paper for everything? Too much of either type. So the question was, was there enough paper for everything? Yes, I think so. Um, because I had extras, I had E and I don't know what I was doing with E. Um, and then too much of either type. So this tells me there are two types or more types of paper. Um, but as, as we went through this, I didn't understand that there were two types of paper. I felt like there were two types of paper. There was some harder, some heavier, and some lighter. But I didn't know there was supposed to be. And so she's asking too much of either type. I don't know. Um... I didn't realize that we were supposed to have more of the cardstock or more of the thinner weight paper. So I, I don't know how to answer that. Were the general instructions easy to follow? Um, no, because, you know, as you can see, I, I followed through them the best I could. Um, how was the labeling for core pack versus accessory pack? Did everything make sense? How could they be improved? Well, so the core pack was labeled core with the core papers and the accessories was labeled accessories. You know, and it was full of accessories. So the labeling for the core pack versus the accessory pack, 
Um, I, I guess everything made sense. I felt pretty pretty confident that what I was using was from the core pack. I didn't make it to the accessories because I, I didn't decorate. Um, but I, I felt like what I was using was from the core pack, and I felt like I understood that. So... Um, what accessories did you like or dislike? Again, I didn't get to the accessories, but I can tell you that the bee theme, the little bee stickers and the little um, bee charms and um, all that are super cute. Um, the flowers are a neat addition to that. So I liked that that you could easily make a bee, you know, folio out of this with all the bee themed things. Um, I disliked, and I'll just say, just skimming through those, I was kind of confused as as to what this guy is. I mean, I understand he's a, a Skechers playing card, and he's the Joker, but he's not B themed. I don't, I don't know what. I mean, I guess maybe you can decorate over him or whatever. But from my experience working with playing cards, they have a coated slicky. And they're hard to create on. <laughs> Unless you use some sort of gesso to give them a base. Or you sand them down or something like that. They glue typically doesn't stick really well to them. So I was kind of confused as to what we're doing with the Skechers dog in the bee stuff. So that kind of threw me off a little bit. What would have made this project easier? Again, um, the instructions to be more clear as to what... Someone who doesn't, has never done a folio before, knows what they're doing. Um, and, I hate to harp on this, but if you are if you start out telling me about E, then, then finish telling me about E. I'm, st I'm still stuck on the E papers. I don't, I don't know what I was supposed to do with the E papers. Um, so, uh, clearer instructions, um, more thorough instructions, I guess. Um, what would you have liked to see added to it? Paper, accessories, tool supplies. I don't think that there's anything that I would add to it. Um, it looks like it's all pretty much here. I mean, you got a variety of colored papers, um, which I like that. Um, variety of yellows and oranges to go with the B theme. You've got a variety of accessories to play around with. Some different printed papers and different... Um, buttons and, and flowers and things like that. So I think that there's um, there's plenty of stuff here to play with, to create with. Uh, I don't think that there's anything that needs to be added to it. The accessories, the paper, all that's, all that's good, I think. Um, how much do you think this kit is worth sold, including shipping costs of four to five dollars? I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer that because, again, I didn't finish it, and so I don't feel comfortable saying it's worth however many dollars when I didn't, when I didn't finish it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not, I can't answer that one. Um, any other thoughts, ideas, themes that I'd like to see? Uh, I think the bee theme is cute. I think flower theme is cute. Um, you know, your typical nature theme, um, you can do cat theme, dog theme, just your basic stuff I think is a good starting point. The bees are pretty popular flowers, um, woodland creatures, the nature, the leaves and the trees, things like that would certainly be um, some themes you could play around with. But um, so yeah, I uh, that's what I've got. Um, again, this kit was sent to me by Samantha at Acorn Hat Creations dot etsy dot com um i'm new to meeting her so i haven't had much interaction with her and uh, again i haven't had a chance to really you know check out her etsy and check out her social medias and all that um because i've been so busy this last week or so um but i did want to come on here and and do this folio um and give her some feedback and um I thought it would be best to, to create along with you guys and um, so we could all kind of learn together. Um, so my uh, suggestion to Samantha would be to step back to the drawing board and um, maybe kind of 
give me a little bit more clearer instructions as to what to do with this. Um, yeah, I, I think it has tons of potential. It's a cute little kit. <clears throat> um, I assume that a folio is like a small journal, just, you know, I think this is great. I think it would be cute. Um, I, you know, I was, I was excited to, to play around with it. And I still am. Um, I just, um, I, I just am afraid to go further without knowing what I'm doing. So I'll do my research on what a folio is and, and go from there. So that's what I've got. And, um, I certainly encourage you guys to check out, um, Acorn Hat Creations. Samantha over there, um, she, you know, I have had very little interaction with her, but she's very sweet, and um, I, I think, I think she's, she's got something here. Um, just needs a little bit of tweaking, and I think that that it will be great. Um, so hopefully, hopefully she can make that happen. Um, I look forward to it. So I will encourage you guys to to find her on Etsy, follow her, check her out, and. Um, you know, just kind of see what she's about. And, you know, if she has an option for you guys to, to test out some of her products, I highly encourage you to do that. I mean, we're all here to learn. We're all here to um, build a community of like-minded creators. And um, I, I mean, no offense about any of this video. I think, um, I hope that it's helpful to her and maybe even helpful to others that are thinking of putting together kits or doing some tutorials or what I had a little conversation the other day with a lady that um oh my mind is blank um but we were talking about um and when we commented a little bit back and forth on um my one of my YouTubes about it um about doing tutorials and I and being inclusive and I would love to do some tutorials um, of some of the things that I do and I create with my journals, but I, I'm stuck on two things. One is I'm afraid I'm not gonna be clear enough in my instructions to, um, to reach everybody. I know I can't reach everybody, but I wanna be as clear as possible in my instructions to, to reach People who learn at different way in different ways and different levels and two I want if you've been following me if you started following me if you've seen any of my videos you know I'm super low-key I'm super down-to-earth um, I'm I don't do a lot of I don't do any editing um, and so what you see is what you get and I make mistakes and all that good stuff and so I just don't know if that's tutorial material. <laughs> it would be for me because I like to see people in the raw, people in the real, making mistakes and, you know, dirtying their fingers and cutting the, the page too short and all those things that we do. I don't want to see a perfect video of a perfect person making a perfect journal because I'm not perfect and I can't create perfectly and so... That's, that's where I am. So any of my tutorials that I end up doing are going to be, again, low-key, let's make some mistakes. And maybe that's what I need to call them is let's make mistake tutorials or something. I don't know. But anyways, um, again, I appreciate Samantha at Acorn Hat sending me these goodies to, to play around with. I'm going to set them aside. Um, I'm not going to go rogue and create with them. I've got them all tucked back up in here and I hope to hear from her. I'm going to send her a message and let her know this video is up and, um, hopefully she appreciates the feedback and the constructive criticism. And so hopefully she can take that and create some, some really cool kits for all of us to create with. Um, yeah, I, that's what I want to see. Um, that's what I want to see is, is, um, some more kits, um, clearer instructions, and um, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Thank you for joining me on this little journey, I'm trying to figure out what a folio is, and um, I will do my own research and figure out 
what it was that I was supposed to be making. And maybe that will help. Maybe I can come back to it. Maybe that's what I need to do is watch a couple of YouTube videos of you guys creating folios so I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I can come back and create. And if I do that, I will be back with her kit. Again, I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to reach out to her, let her know this video is here, and, um, and see where we go from here. Maybe she can watch the video and see where I stumbled along and, and can give me some clarifying instructions as to, oh, <laughs> you should be doing this or that. And, and maybe it'll open up some clarity for me. So anyways, I'm going to close this up. I'm sorry so lengthy, but I, I just wanted to give some honest feedback on this kit. Um, I've done this kind of thing for a couple other people before. I haven't really uh, made a YouTube video because I'm fairly new to YouTube, but I'm happy to, if any of you have stuff that you want to try out, kits that you're creating, papers that you're, your designs that you're creating, playing with, that you need tested out, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to give you my honest feedback. I'm happy to create with them and, and see what all I can do with it. Um, so yeah, just reach out to me if, if that's something you do and you're interested in having somebody, I'm not going to say on your design team, but you know, that, that could give you some feedback on kits or anything like that. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Anyways, I will see you guys soon. Thank you for joining me. And um, yeah, check out Acorn Hat Creations. And I say that and that makes me wonder... I said it right. Acorn Hat Creations, yes. <laughs> Be sure and check out Samantha at acornhatscreation.etsy.com, I believe. And um, we'll see you soon.